Okay, now we're going to put the entire Th1 pathway together. So up here we have our macrophage, and on the surface of the macrophage is our pattern recognition receptor, aka PRR. The PRR that is there to recognize patterns associated with pathogens, so that's PAMP, Pathogen Associated Molecular Pattern. So remember, PAMPs are only on pathogens, and they're a way that our immune response is able to determine, is this non-self, is this foreign, and is this harmful? And remember that not all uh, germs, bacteria, viruses, are harmful to us. So we don't on always want an immune response to microbes, only if they're going to be harmful to us and cause disease. So two things happen when the PAMP binds to the PRR. And in this case, we have a bacterium with a flagella. And it's the flagella that is the PAMP. So two things happen. One is that the macrophage um, produces and releases immune signals. So immune signals are what we call cytokines. And these can have physiological uh, impacts or responses especially if these cytokines travel up to the brain and they can induce fever, swelling, sweating, all of these things associated with inflammation, aka the inflammatory immune response. The second part of what happens is that the PAMP on the PRR is taken inside the cell via a method called endocytosis. It's a specialized form of phagocytosis whereby this receptor and the PAMP plus pathogen are brought inside the cell in a specialized compartment called an endosome. Inside the endosome, the PAMP pathogen in its entirety is broken up into little bits. These little bits make up the antigens. Remember, antigens are sequences of non-self that are harmful. So, they could be sequences of amino acids, they could be sequences of nucleotides, or some other mixture that uh, the immune response is able to recognize as non-self and harmful. So at random, one of these little pieces of antigen, and we're going to call that antigen number one, is loaded by the cell up onto a receptor called MHC class 2. MHC receptors are where the antigens are loaded, and these MH receptors are what activates our helper T cells. So, as you can see here, we have MHC class 2 receptor plus antigen number 1 loaded onto it. Our helper T cell type 1, aka Th1, has a T cell receptor on it. This T cell receptor is specific for the antigen number one plus MHC class two combination. So when all three of these things bind together, we have Th1 activation. This causes A, the Th1 to divide, produce more of itself, and it also causes it to release cytokines. In this case, we're gonna release cytokines to activate killer T cells or cytotoxic lymphocytes. The cytokines that do that are IL-2, interferon gamma, and TNF-alpha, to name a few. These are the ones that you'll have to memorize for this class. Remember, cytokines are immune signals. These signals are proteins, and so everything that we've learned about proteins applies to this. And it's really important to remember that helper T cells, both Th1 and Th2, don't directly bind and activate killer T cells. But it's these cytokines that are the things that um, signal to CTLs, killer T cells, to activate and search and destroy for their particular um, infected cell with that particular antigen. So down here I've showed how um, an example of IL-2, which is our protein cytokine, will search out and find its specific receptor on a killer T cell. So I've shown here the IL-2 receptor. 
So when IL-2 binds to the IL-2 receptor, this is what activates the killer T cell. So recall that again, I'm going to repeat it again so you remember, helper T cells do not directly activate killer T cells, but they release cytokines and it's the cytokines that activate the killer T cell. If you, if you notice down here, we have TCR. Remember that's also the T cell receptor. So this T cell receptor, it was up on our um, helper T cells. Oh, uh, well, I didn't, yeah, up here, T cell receptor. And it's also down here on our killer T cell. And remember, this T cell receptor is specific for antigen number one. So another antigen will, will not work here. It's all very specific. Okay, so we have activation of this CTL. What happens is now this T cell receptor, which is specific for antigen number one, will go and look for an infected cell that has antigen number one. And what actually I haven't written here yet is that um, here's the process over here. Let's uh, take a step back for a second. And I've shown our original pathogen, which is our bacterium with a flagella. It infects this cell. Let's just say it's a lung cell here. So the bacteria comes inside um, and because each cell has its own internal immune defenses, it's brought into a compartment and that compartment fortunately breaks up that pathogen into a bunch of different antigens and by random chance, this antigen number one gets loaded onto this receptor here. Now, maybe you're starting to think, what is the name of this receptor? And hopefully you're thinking about, well, antigen presentation, so it's a kind of MHC. So this would be correct, except now because we're talking about not an antigen presenting cell like macrophages or DCs, but we're talking about just any infected cell. So this is not class two MHC, but actually class one. So hopefully you saw that we have two classes of MHC. The MHC class two are found on APC and directly activate helper T cells. But MHC class one are found on all nucleated cells. And it's this function here um, to activate CTLs and to say, hey, this is an infected cell and you need to destroy me, apoptosis. So that's what we're showing here, is that we have uh, MHC class one loaded with antigen number one, and this is what the TCR, the T cell receptor on the killer T cell recognizes. So they bind together, and when this stuff binds together, that's the signal, kill signal. So, and then apoptosis happens of that cell. So I didn't write it here, but make sure you note, this is MHC class one. It should be on the diagram that I handed out to you. So next we're gonna do is our final pathway, which is the TH2 response leading to antibody production.